tell me how you felt the first time you put that costume mm. on, how it mm. felt. Oh my God, well, it was an experience. I break the law every day. I use the woman's toilet, but I'm still legally a man here. If I commit a crime, I get sent to a man's prison. I pay a female insurance stamp and don't get a pension until I'm 65. I cannot be raped. If somebody raped me, they would get off with assault, which is much lesser offence. I mean, we are born, we're not created. So there's no way that, you know, I mean, 50, 100 years ago, I would have killed myself. But fortunately, with medical science that it is today, people like me are helped. I'm Caroline Cossey, I don't know. I'm, I suppose I am transsexual, but um, as I said, you know, if you have to put me in a box, I'd rather be classified as a female as opposed to a man. But there's not such a thing as a third sex, so I'd like to be considered a woman. <laughs> For me, it was like a cosmetic job. I mean, if you have a wart or a, a growth, you'd have it removed. And to me, you know, I mean, like you're a man and you see that part of your body is a very important part, you know, so the idea of cutting it off would have put, you know, it wouldn't appeal to you. But to me, I didn't see that part of my body as something that was vital to function. And um, it was just a hindrance and um, it was removed, like having a haircut. <laughs> Caroline's career was launched as Tula, and in no time at all, the six-foot model was in constant demand. For me, it was such an ego thing. I mean, I needed that as an ego boost. There was even work in the glamorous lineup of Bond girls in the film For Your Eyes Only. But Caroline underestimated the risks of her exposure. The press refused to accept Chula's success at face value. When you went to the bathroom as a child, this sounds very stupid. I sat down. You sat down. That's good. <laughs> that was instinct. Yeah, so you just, so really everything was just all there except, uh-oh, something's wrong here when you look down. It shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was all in... <laughs> It was all intact, you yeah. know, I mean, it's, it's amazing that I sort of wanted to sort of get rid of it and yeah. spend the rest of my life trying to get my hands on one, but... Okay. Um... <laughs> Twelve, thirteen, I was having blackouts, which was obviously a hormonal thing, but I was in the country and no one sort of... I didn't get... What do you mean like... blackouts? Well, like a woman going through a menopause. Have you been through your menopause yet? I had a hysterectomy, so I'll never go through it. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I will never say I'm hot. My name is Gina Rosero. I'm August 2019 Playmate. She's like, good honey, yes! Alley of the Philippines to the jungle of Costa Rica, here I am. Oh my god, look at this. Oh my god. August Playmate, she made it, honey. As a young trans girl growing up in the Philippines, seeing Carolyn Cosi, Tula, and the cover of Playboy created a sense of possibility for me, the sense of hope. She became instantly my inspiration. Little did I know that I will be doing Playboy, so what a complete crazy full circle. It looks so good. Oh my God. I love my body. I love my journey. I love the woman that I am now, and I'm going to celebrate that in the pages of Playboy. Meet Inez Rao, Playboy's first transgender playmate. She will appear in the centerfolds of the first issue of Playboy since Hugh Hefner's death. Playboy's November-December issue will feature a transgender model in the centerfold for the first time in its 64-year history. Her name is Inez Rao and she's a French model. It's actually her second appearance in Playboy magazine. The first time was in 2014 and it was how she celebrated her coming out. Inez was photographed fully nude by Ryan McGinley and the shoot ended up getting her signed with an agency. Inez has been a sought after model for quite some time. She's been featured in Vogue Italia and she's also been featured in a Balmain campaign. There will also be a 100 page tribute to Mr. Hefner in this issue. This actually isn't the first time that a transgender model has been in Playboy. In 1981, transgender actress Caroline Cossey was featured in the magazine, though many people did not know she was transgender. Playboy tweeted a photo of Inez with the caption, To those who can't handle this, Hugh Hefner fought for the rights of all people. This is beautiful to see. Which I've had to keep a secret for so long and I'm a terrible secret keeper. Pam is marking a milestone as Playboy changes its longtime format. She'll cover the very last Playboy with nudity. I got a call from Hef's attorney who said, we don't want anybody else. There's nobody else. Could you do the last cover of Playboy? Well, Hef always told me, he goes, from Maryland to you, and he said, I made this magazine for a girl like you, and 
You know, I love him so much. He's such a sweetheart. And people have been asking me over the last year, would you ever pose for Playboy again? I'm like, they're never gonna ask. I mean, I'm sure they're sick of me. I've been, had a rough few years where I felt a little insecure. I was, you know, everyone's getting older. And then, boom, here they call again. So I made the most of it. Pam's done 14 Playboy covers. Her first was way back in 1989 when she was just 22 years old. The parties at the Playboy Mansion, were they as good as the image? Yes, probably better. I, I, we had a lot of fun. But I didn't, it wasn't like they were these big orgy type things. I wasn't into anything like that. I've never, I've only, um, like I, I always say this and people don't like to believe me, but I have not been with that many men in my life. I've been with, I've been married quite a few times because I believe in commitment and, and um, sex in a monogamous relationship. I, I'm not a one night stand kind of girl. <laughs> never. Sex is a, is a strange a subject that um, you know everybody feels differently about. I'm sure I've been lied to many times, but I'm more of an optimist and hope that what people are telling me are the truth. I've been offered a lot of money, even for a jacuzzi. Are you kidding? <laughs> but I said, I would call Hef and go, why do they offer me $10,000 to go to have a jacuzzi with them? And he said, come home right now. And then the girls would tell me, stop calling Hef, you're gonna give him a stroke. And I've had offers to do film where they said, you can have the job if you come home, if you come with me to the hotel to do a private audition, mm. you can have the job. If not, the girl over there will do it. And I said, well, thank you very much, goodbye. Well, I mean, I, I didn't want it to be exact of what I've always done. So I, so I kind of made up a, a fantastic, yummy story. Listen, whatever she had to say, I seem to think that it was bull. You know, when I first did Playboy, I remember, first of all, people telling me I could never get in Playboy. So um, I worked hard, got it. And then they said, um, you can never do anything past being a playmate, which I don't know why people fill your head with such negative kind of beliefs, but I kind of thrived off of, of those versus other people. I think other girls might take that and never try. Good question. <laughs> Would I ever pose for Playboy again? for two million dollars. <laughs> you know, if the money is right, heck yeah, because you've already seen it. It's just a little looser. But I would, um, I would, but, but you know, I, I think I would charge way too much than they have right now. I told my parents that I went to go post for Playboy. So my first day, I'm a nervous wreck because how often do you stand in front of a room full of people naked? I never. So we start off with just the undies and the boobies. And you're standing there. And you start off with the undies. undies. Start with the undies. They, they make you go slow, Oprah. Just let yeah, you know. Yeah. So, you know, but my one you thing was You will never like, have to worry about me doing this, so don't worry. <laughs> So I'm a nervous wreck, so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna do it. So I, uh, and all of a sudden I hear, whoa! 